Hello my friends, it is your brother Hampton from Hybrid Calisthenics. Today I want to show you an exercise called the Clutch Flag. This exercise is great at training your core, strengthening the sides of your body, and works as a pretty good party trick. And another good thing about the Clutch Flag is that it's very simple to learn. Not necessarily easy, but it is simple. As in, just like with everything else we do, we start with something we can do, and we work it until we're strong enough to move on. In fact, it's so simple that I've explained how to build up to it in less than a minute in a shorter video, which I'll link down in the description if you want to check it out. So while I have talked about this exercise before, I wanted to make this slightly longer video to give some more information, answer some questions that I noticed people had, and hopefully help you out. Because while the move isn't necessarily easy, it is easier than it looks once you have the right technique down and if you build up with the right progressions. But first, a message from our sponsors. It's me. I'm the sponsor. Have a beautiful day. Okay, so first let's talk about the grip. Now this is one of the things that I'm glad I have some extra time to explain because I've noticed a lot of people get it wrong and it's a lot easier if you have the right grip. You wanna stand in front of something vertical, ideally perfectly vertical to make the exercise as hard as it can be. We'll talk about that later, but you can use a pole or a tree. A pole is probably better than a tree because in the previous video I demonstrated on a tree and that's fine but it will leave bruises on you. The bark will leave bruises on your skin, so you might be in for a shock when you take off your shirt. <laughs> but either way, find something vertical, stand like this with your armpit in front of the pole, and grab like this, and reach up just about as high as you can. This is about sternum height, so like this. And this will be your upper arm. So you wanna take a step back from here, and you want to wedge your other elbow into your abs a little bit. You wanna tense up a little bit. If you notice that your stomach hurts, you may lack the core strength for this, but wedge it into your abs and tense up pretty much as hard as you can and grab around hip height. Now, with the way I'm positioned now, I'd be flagging off this way, so I'm just gonna rotate a little bit so you can kind of see where I'm at. And from here, you kind of have the grip to just hang. You can't really see my feet, but. So once again, from further away, stand with your armpit in front of the pole, slide up, step back, Wedge into your abs like this and just kind of hang out. And then before you get too far ahead, make sure you can do it from both sides. Now most of the steps and progressions that I'll show in this video will probably take most of you some time to master and get comfortable with. But if you struggle with this first step, with the grip, if you have, if you have trouble even grabbing onto the pole or a tree and you're sliding down and you feel like you can't even get a grasp on it, then you may want to consider practicing with some easier exercises. Now don't worry if you can't do the clutch flag right away, but I would definitely say be comfortable with plenty of push-ups, pull-ups, and hanging leg raises before you start practicing for the clutch flag. If you can't do it quite yet, if you're not ready quite yet, don't spend too much time worrying in my opinion. This video will still be here for you when you're ready. You're building plenty of grip strength, core strength, and total body control with those other exercises. We'll be here for you when you're ready. So after you're comfortable holding on with your grip for a few seconds, you wanna try straightening out your body diagonally and holding out one leg for a one leg diagonal flag like this. You can use either leg, but the top leg usually seems a little cleaner. Now we are holding on diagonally, but we don't wanna let our body droop like this. We wanna to try to keep it straight as that engages our core a little bit more and trains our body a little bit more. If you can't quite get it yet, keep trying and you will. Now, if you've watched some of my fitness videos before, then you'll have a pretty good idea on how we progress in that we always start with something that we can do, one of these steps and progressions, and we work it until we hit a certain goal. And when we hit that goal, we're usually strong enough to move on. Now, with things like push-ups and pull-ups, we count sets and reps to know when we hit the goal. But with static holds and isometrics, we don't have sets and reps, we have seconds, so that's what we count. So it's a pretty simple concept. We use it in calisthenics, but it works all across fitness and weightlifting and beyond. But if there's a key to success or a reason that some people fail, it's whether or not they spend some time training their early progressions for all they're worth. If you're naturally strong or you're naturally athletic, or if you're like me and you can kind of sort of do maybe an ugly flag the first time of trying, then you might be tempted to move past the earlier steps, you might think it's too easy, or you might not really count. You might get up there and be like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that's like, got it, nine. But if you really want a good looking flag and you want to increase your strength, then I would definitely recommend spending some extra time on the earlier steps. They're still training your core, they're still training the sides of your body, you're still getting better at the clutch flag, maybe better than if you were just trying to train the straight movement. So keep that in mind, just because you might be able to do a harder variation, it doesn't necessarily mean it'll make you stronger faster than an earlier variation, depending on how well you can do it. 
If possible, take your phone or camera and film yourself doing it. Have a clock or a timer going on where you can see it or hear it and really count the seconds. Right out then. So after you can hold a diagonal flag pretty well with a single leg, you want to try with both knees bent like this. You don't want to be too high, but you also don't want to sag either. Try working your weakest side first and then match the time on your strong side. I couldn't quite tell from the camera monitor, but if I was sagging a little bit, then I shouldn't be. Be better than me. Alrighty, after you can do that, then just straighten out your legs for a full diagonal flag. For all these steps, you can find steps in between if you need to. For example, if all the way out is too hard, go three quarters or halfway. Now, I may want to hurry a little bit because we're in a campground and I found a vacant spot, but I actually didn't rent it. So if someone who did rent it shows up, I will have to leave immediately and finish filming somewhere else. This was just the perfect location. Seriously, guys, finding a pole or a place to practice these is harder than it might seem. Harder than doing the actual flag, I think. Okay, so now we should be ready to go fully horizontal. So all you have to do is sit down, but you have to sit down sideways. You can sit down sideways, my friend. Now, especially as these steps get harder, you might feel like you have to hold your breath. It might make the hold seem a little bit easier, and it does seem to improve your strength a little bit. However, if you want to train that way initially, that's fine, but at some point, I would recommend learning to breathe evenly throughout the hold. So you know how I talk while I demonstrate some of these exercises? That's not really as difficult or as impressive as some people might think. It's really just me training myself to breathe evenly throughout these exercises. And it's funny because I never really expected anyone to pick up on that or comment on it. The only reason I did it was to save time during the editing process because editing takes a while. Editing takes a while and the sun is setting, we gotta go. All right, from here, stick out a single leg. It might seem easier to have your leg bend out front like this, but over time, try to keep it parallel with your body. All right, be honest. Can you all see me? Because on this monitor, it looks like I'm a shadow sometimes. I like wearing black, but I'm considering doing all my videos wearing hot pink so you can see me better. Alrighty, we're almost there. Now we can try the horizontal flag, but with bent knees. My mother always told me I had a wire that was bent in my brain. And the owner showed up, so here's a clutch flag and you're done. And here's the other side. Whew, I never know how fast I can film until I'm suddenly put on a time limit and I have to wrap up. But congratulations, my friend, on doing the clutch flag. But it actually works out well that we're here because if you're having some trouble with some of the harder variations, especially the ones where you start to go fully horizontal, if you can find a swing set or some kind of slanted pole like this, these are very, very helpful. Almost every variation you do will be at least slightly easier on a slanted pole. But not when it's extremely hot. Okay, Whew. gotta get this in the first take too. All right, ow, you know what? Just imagine the exercises. Just imagine the exercises. Ow. That actually wasn't that bad. I was just being a crybaby. All right, there's a young boy that wanted to use a swing set, I think, so I'm gonna give him his room. But those slanted poles, wherever you can find them, are very, very useful for learning any kind of flag exercise. In fact, I didn't really make any progress on the human flag, despite being able to do harder variations of different exercises, until I tried it on a swing set. So definitely try it out. But this kind of goes to show that as you use the system of calisthenics or any kind of strength progression of using an easier variation and then building up to a harder variation, there are sometimes some easier variations that will progress you a lot faster than other ones. So if you seem to be stuck on one, practice the earlier variations, and if you still can't get it, practice something of similar difficulty, but is different. Speaking of practicing, this is how I recommend practicing these kind of holds. Try it two to three times a week, maybe once a week if you're just starting out. Do them for as long as you can or the goal and wait a couple minutes in between and do them five to six times a session. Now you might be tempted to do more than that. You might want to do it every other day or even every day. And while that mindset and that training method can be good for endurance and sometimes muscle building, with a clutch flag we're really building strength and skill. And when you're doing it, you really want to come back fresher and stronger almost every time. So in this sense, if you're still sore from yesterday or a day before or the last training session, I would maybe recommend waiting a day or even two until you feel completely ready to come back stronger than you were before. 
So I hope this video can help you out. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions. As usual, I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. Now I do apologize if some of the progressions I showed were not as straight or as perfect as they could be. I'm trying to look directly at the camera lens and I can't really see myself and the camera monitor is pretty small. So for that reason, if you can somehow practice in front of a mirror, that might really help your technique. Whoever you are and wherever you are, I hope you know that I want the best for you. I am cheering for you to succeed. I do love you and I want you to do well. Have a beautiful day, my friend.